You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. What do you need to know to serve as a team leader for an international short-term mission team with the LCMS? We're going to learn more in just a minute. Thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin for supporting The Coffee Hour. Find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Live Uncommon. Joining us today, the Reverend Richard Welmer, pastor of University Lutheran Church at Indiana University in Bloomington, Indiana. Pastor Welmer, welcome back. Thank you. We had a chance to talk with Pastor Wilmer. Gosh, it's been over a month now before you led a team on an international team to the Czech Republic. So today we're going to do a little follow up on what it was like leading a team on an international trip to the Czech Republic. Also joining us today, Louis Ostermeyer. He's a member of University Lutheran Church at IU and a member of the short term mission team. Louis, welcome to the coffee hour. Hello. Thank you. Also joining us today, Ann Gonzalez, Manager of Short-Term Mission Training and Engagement with the LCMS Office of International Mission. Welcome back, Ann. It's always good to be here. So let's start with you, Pastor Welmer. We got the we got the story before you left for your international service on a short-term team. In what ways was leading this group of students, college students on this international trip, different than the domestic trips you've done in the past? Mainly the trying to avoid people thinking of it as just kind of an adventure trip overseas and trying to get them into the right mindset of this is something that we're doing to spread the gospel. And even though their lifestyle is very Western, they still have a culture that is 70% atheist. And so it may come as a shock that this very similar culture is in need of Christ. And, And so that was the, the biggest thing. And most of the other projects that we've done domestically have been more service-oriented as far as doing a project of some kind, like you know, gutting houses during after Hurricane Katrina and you know, things like that. And so it, it's, it had a very different focus. It was very much more gospel-oriented. What was it about the preparation for this trip? Now that you've gone on the, the, the trip, you've, you've led the short-term team. What did you appreciate about the preparation that got you ready for this trip? I thought everything was very well, well prepared. The the staff was, was great in supplying information and and then providing like the student handbooks, the the leader handbooks, the, even some of the guidelines for the, the team meetings were very helpful to help just kind of focus everyone, you know, from the first one down to the very last one get them ready for for what they're going to be going through and uh, asking great questions, having them think about things with their eyes open as to what they're going to be encountering in another country. What did you learn as a leader from this trip Mm -hmm. that you might, you know, that you would recommend doing again or that you would like to do again if you lead another international team? What are some things that, now that you're a veteran at this, right? (laughs) What are some helpful things that you learned that you might like to repeat if you were to lead a future team? Well, I would like to start more than two months in advance. (laughs) It would be wonderful. But because, well, I actually started thinking about it in October. And, but then it didn't really kind of percolate down to where I actually made the inquiry and, and got the information and, by that time, it was like late November, and I, you know, I thought we would, we might be able to scrape up four people, but we ended up having ten all together, with one having to pull out. But I was, and that the last person came on. I think it was Lewis that came on in late January, and and so we here we are leaving the second week of March. So I would definitely, you know, start people off thinking about it way, way in advance. It helps make it less crazy as far as just the the timeline pressure and everything, fundraising, things like that. And so fortunately, we didn't have a, a whole lot to uh, to worry about as far as fundraising because we had, we've had several years of having a golf scramble that raised money for our spring break trips, whether they be mission trips or domestic service projects. And so we haven't really done one since COVID. And so we had funds that were built up and it, it really did help us in this respect. So I would definitely have an ongoing fundraising thing going on with your congregation, other congregations in the circuit or the district that would uh, be interested in helping a mission group go to just have that 
available where you don't have to worry about uh, all the fundraising. There were some individuals who did some fundraising on their own and were very successful at it. And they were able to pay off the portion that, that the students themselves had to pay. But we we had enough for over half the cost for all the people involved. So it was it was great. So that I would I would definitely suggest you know, starting early, having fundraising available, and um, just just promoting the idea of going overseas. And possibly making that, since it is a kind of a more of expensive endeavor that you would maybe plan to do it once every three years to get a, give everyone, if you're a campus ministry like ours, to give everyone a chance to go at least one year during their time. And I think that would be probably the, the three things that I would kind of highlight for any, for future trips. Those are words of wisdom from someone who, who knows, knows kind of what's happening now. Now, Lewis. You joined onto this trip what, in late January. What what made you interested in participating in the short term mission trip? Yeah, so I had actually last year studied abroad in Hamburg, Germany, and so I came home from that trip saying, you know, I'm burnt out from traveling. I don't want to go back anywhere. And then every Sunday in a midweek service, I was hearing pastor, oh, we're doing this mission trip. Like, please sign up. And you know, as I had never done a mission trip before. And so I started researching, you know, what this trip would be about. And on the LCMS website, I'd seen what the missionaries had posted. And it, it seemed like a worthwhile endeavor. And I am graduating this year. So it seemed like a good way to like get some involvement, more involvement in the church here in Bloomington before I, I graduated. So those are kind of the things that led me to, to participate. So once you were on board with the team, how did you prepare for this trip? How did your your whole team prepare for the trip? I know you had some meetings and preparations and some fundraising. What do you remember in terms of the preparations? Yeah, so we had meetings, you know, a handful of Sundays after church to kind of discuss about, you know, different cultural things that we might encounter there. Also just different ways to think about, you know, what what are ways that we can share the gospel with the people that we encounter there? Because we can't really predict every situation that we're going to be in. So, you know, we're we're used to more of American culture. So also understanding those cultural differences. We also, I, I did a, some conversations with my home church in Fort Wayne, and they were very gracious and helped me fundraise as well for my trip. So very thankful and gracious to Zion Lutheran in Fort Wayne, Indiana. So thank you to everyone there. So what are some of the ways that you were able to serve once you were on the ground there? What what are some of the things that, that you were able to do? Yeah, so the week was kind of split into kind of two parts. The first half was very, you know, mission focused. We were in some smaller cities in the Eastern Czech Republic. And so what we did most days was we would meet in the morning at the the church plant slash kind of community center that they had established there. And then we would walk to these schools that were right nearby. And we would kind of go from class to class in these schools and give presentations in English about kind of what it's like life is like in America, because many of them have never been there and are interested in what life is like there. And then after those presentations, we would kind of break off into smaller groups with students and they could ask us questions. We would just have a conversation or do kind of a small activity with them. And, and then at the end of that, we would invite them to come to the church plant um, slash community center after school. So we could do more activities. And then while there, the, the missionaries did a direct presentation of the gospel, which was, which was very, very cool to see. And and then we would kind of have a short conversation after that as well with the, the kids about any questions they had about um, the gospel and what we had shared that day. How did your time as a student studying abroad in Hamburg uh, prepare you? W- were there any um, benefits from your, your previous international experience uh, while you were on this trip? Yeah, I, I think it definitely helped in terms of one, just how to like tone down being an American in Europe. <laughs> sometimes <laughs> we can... <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it can be a little loud and you know it, they're i think they're a little quieter more reserved in, in many countries there so that was something i learned and just other cultural things the food and just the the, the different way of life so I, I think it definitely helped me and, and also language barrier be more comfortable with not understanding everything that's that's going on in, in the world around you was was helpful that just painted a picture in my mind of someone like really loudly saying, I'm from the Midwest. I mean, yes, that's definitely a strange. <laughs>
Well, we have more to learn about serving internationally on a short-term team. We're talking with Pastor Wilmer and Louis Ostermeyer today, who recently served with a team from uh, University Lutheran Church in Bloomington, Indiana. We'll continue the conversation in just a moment. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. At Concordia University, Wisconsin, we believe you were created for a reason, to use your God-given gifts to help others, to live a life of self-sacrifice in a me-first world, to live a life that's uncommon. Whether you're taking one of 50-plus online programs or learning with us in person on the shores of Lake Michigan, you'll be equipped to make an uncommon impact. Learn more at cuw.edu. Concordia University, Wisconsin. Live uncommon. Sharing our faith can sometimes be hard, especially face-to-face. That's one of the reasons KFUO is here, to share God's Word globally on your behalf and to equip you with the knowledge, confidence, and words to share Jesus yourself. This share make a gift to KFUO Radio so we can continue sharing Christ to the world. Donate online at kfuo.org slash share That's kfuo.org slash share Welcome back to the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. We're learning about serving on an international short-term mission team with the LCMS. Our guest today, the Reverend Richard Welmer, pastor of University Lutheran Church at Indiana University in Bloomington, Indiana. Louis Ostermeyer, a member of University Lutheran Church at IU and also a member of the short-term mission team. And Anne Gonzalez, manager of short-term mission training and engagement with the LCMS Office of International Mission. Pastor Wilmer, Lewis painted a nice picture for us of what it was like to be a student serving on the team and and what it was like to prepare for the team. What was the day-to-day like for you while serving on the short-term team in the Czech Republic? For me? Yeah. For, it was it was wonderful. I I just was so happy to have it finally, you know, come into fruition and and to to gather everyone together. It was just very exciting to travel with these great students and, and to find out what was in store for us. And I, I was so impressed with the missionaries that were were there, the local missionaries, and their dedication and and the the plan that they had, the strategy for inviting community members into the community center. And it was such a versatile place. And they were coming up with some great programming ideas to meet the needs of the community in order to present the gospel to them. And so with both the school and with the adults that they reached out to, I I was very impressed with the contacts that they had made. Uh, even some of the helpers that they had there that were like 19 or in their early 20s, uh, they were there to help out. They were kind of products of, of their mission outreach. And so that was very exciting and it was really fun to meet them and just to, to know that the work of, of Christ was was going on in other parts of the world and, and being it was being shared and, and the, the seeds were planted and the seeds are growing. So that whole thing was very exciting. And and then just the, the whole mission education process that we went through, going to the different places where we learned about the history of, of the church in, in the Czech Republic, kind of the, the German Lutheran aspect of it and how that was kind of... Uh, thwarted by the Counter-Reformation and just really appreciating the fact that the church there has been really struggling through through so many different things. And so in the later latter days, it's been in and the, and the Soviet occupation. And, and so I think there, yeah, there, there are people that are probably ready to really hear the gospel. And so I, I, I was impressed with the, the school's that you could go in and, and share the gospel, which was a complete reversal of, of what had been the system before. That was amazing. And uh, that they're totally open to it. Lewis, what are some of the things that you learned, some ways that you grew during your time, spending time with the, the missionaries and also with the kids getting able, being able to share the gospel? Yeah, I think one big thing was, one, just being more comfortable sharing the gospel. I think kind of in an American context, a lot of people kind of think they have some sort of understanding of it and have maybe some, you know, misconceptions or just kind of half, 
half understandings of, of the gospel. So that makes it a bit more difficult in America to share it sometimes. And also just at times I'm uncomfortable sharing it, you know, with my friends and close people around me. But in the Czech Republic, we kind of built this relationship with these kids over a few days and, and then the, the gospel was directly shared with them and they didn't run out of the room. They didn't say they don't want to talk to us anymore. And, and from what we talked with, with the missionaries, you know, they said, we decided to just share the gospel directly with the kids. They maybe at first decided, tried doing, you know, they'd kind of do a lead up over a couple of days to, to sharing the gospel, but it, it ended up leading to, well, what if a kid just comes one time and they never hear it? So we should just share it. You know, this relationship's built on respect. And I think they're mature enough to understand that, you know, they, they don't have to, they can still come and not believe any of this, but, you know, we're going to share it with you regardless. And so I think having that, that confidence was something that I, I really learned that it's, it's, you know, it is a little risky to share it sometimes with people you're, you're friends with and they don't believe. But if, if that friendship that you've, you've built is, is really built on respect and, and trust, you know, I think that they're not going to, going to hate you or run away just because you, you share your faith with them. So that was, that was one of the biggest things. Um, that I learned. And then also I'd added, I just grew closer to um, my fellow members at University Lutheran Church. I know Pastor Wilmer is, is retiring coming up. So there's a, it's kind of a transition year coming up. And I think ev- everyone needed kind of, kind of a, a bonding event to, to kind of help carry the church up, um, forward through this transition year. So I think that was great. And I think we're still seeing the fruits of that in this, this last semester. I'm going to be here, but I think everyone has become much closer friends because of this trip. Wow. In retirement, think of all the time he'll have to lead teams hey, internationally. Hey, there you go. <laughs> Perfect. I love it. <laughs> Lewis, tell us about the missionaries you got to work alongside in the Czech Republic. Yeah, I, I was extremely impressed by the, the work that the missionaries were doing there. So there was um, a Ben and Chelsea were the two that we um, worked the closest with. Chelsea or Chelsea, she was in um, Poland is where she's stationed. And then Ben is in um, Czech Republic, but they do some crossover. And yeah, Ben is the one we spent the most time with since we were mainly in the Czech Republic. And they have a a church plant set up in a, a smaller town there. And then they live in a larger city, Ostrava, nearby. And yeah, I, just seeing the relationships that he's established over that time and just kind of the, the, the way that they're kind of becoming in, integrated into the community was was just really, really impressive to see. And, and and while we were there, one of the one of the schools that we went to actually, they had been trying to to get connected with for for many years. It's it was just steps away from the the community center, and we were the first ones that the school finally said yes, you can come and and talk with the, the kids, yeah. and, and and so that was really rewarding because many of those kids did come to the church play afterwards after school, and we talked with them. So. Yeah, I, I I can't say enough good things about the work that the missionaries are doing there. I had really no idea before this what what missionary work looked like, and I think the LCMS is doing a great job. Does this experience uh, influence your vocations or, or how you think about mission work and serving the church? Because you're you're about to graduate. How does this experience influence how you think about this now that you're going to be graduated out into the world? Yeah, it, it definitely changes how I how I view it and going forward. I, I've definitely considered if there's any other short term opportunities I could do, and I've d- I've also researched ways that I can s- continue to support the missionaries there. And so, yeah, I'm not exactly sure where where that'll lead me, but I definitely think that's the work is is very important in sharing the gospel in places, even somewhere as atheistic as Czech Republic. I think I learned that there are people there that are open to it. And they, they need someone to come there and, and have that conversation with them. So, yeah, I want to find more ways that I can support missionaries. I want to ask Anne a few questions about serving as a short-term leader in just a moment, but I have important questions to ask. <laughs> um, tell us about the food while you were serving internationally that you got to experience for the first time. Pastor Welmer? Oh, I, I thought it was great. Uh, Lots of dumpling type things that, <laughs> and filled with different you know, cheese or meats or things like that. And so that was very good. I've never eaten so much soup before. They had soup with every meal and it was always delicious. And so that was, that was different. Um, but I also saw like McDonald's and KFC all <laughs> over the place in <laughs> different cities, especially like Prague. So they're, they're not too far away from us as far as fast food, 
But all of the meals that we had served us in restaurants and in the, in the homes of, of people that were part of the community, they were all uh, great meals and really appreciated the, uh, the food that we had. Lewis, how about for you? Food highlights from this trip? Yeah, I would say, I might be pronouncing it wrong, but it's called Bichkova. It's kind of a, like a, kind of a roasted or braised meat, I think. And then it has a, a vegetable root sauce around it. And then they put whipped cream and blueberries on top of it, which is not a combination you would think, but it's, it's delicious. And then there's dumplings, really, really soft and dumplings that are there to kind of soak up the sauce. Amazing food. Nice. Good stuff. I should have known that question. Was Always coming. have to ask about the food. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> and what are the what, what's the need for leaders for short term teams? Yeah, so short term leaders play a really key role in first of all forming a team from a congregation, and and then also helping to coach the the team through the preparation process and and serving on the field and and serving as kind of the primary point of contact both for the LCMS folks and their team members. Um, we talk about preparing teams in six different areas and definitely team leaders do not need to do all of the things. So also delegation is a great skill, <laughs> but they, they kind of are the ones that help make sure those things happen with my coaching and help. Because once once they say yes to serving, they, they come over to me and I help walk them through the process. So they need to be a, an effective communicator and delegator as well. Other qualifications for a leader for short term teams? They need to be a member of an LCMS church. <laughs> they can be a layperson. They can be a staff member. They can be a called worker. That That is very flexible. They do need to be an adult. An adult. An that... adult. Yeah. And probably a 21-year-old adult, not an 18-year-old adult. Okay. Although Valid. we would we would talk about that if it came our way. What if, what if I have an idea for a team? Mm-hmm. What do I do with that? Sure. So the best thing to do is to reach out to us either by emailing mission.teams at lcms.org or you have direct contact with an LCMS missionary already chatting with them and saying, hey, is this something that would be useful that would help meet your needs? Because not, as Pastor Wilmer alluded to, not every type of service is needed in every place. And we really rely on our folks on the ground to tell us what things are useful in their work as they seek to spread the gospel, plant Lutheran churches, and show mercy. So what are the what are the f- first steps for somebody that is interested in serving either as a leader or on a team? Sure. So if you're interested in serving and you don't like have any idea of where you might go or what you might do, a good place to get started is servenow.lcms.org. And there's an inquiry form there that you can say, hey, I'm interested in more info that doesn't commit you to anything at that point. And then kind of depending on on where you and your church are at in the process, the next step might actually be to talk to your pastor or some potential team members or things like that. But if you already had those conversations and you're just looking for a specific opportunity to serve, then there would be an application, some reference checks. And then what really makes everything officially official is when we get your deposit, which is either $50 for an individual serving on by themselves or $150 for a team. And that just is your statement of, yes, I'm in, I'm planning to do this thing on this date, these dates. You've made a commitment then. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, very yep. good. Pastor Wilmer, in leading a team, any advice to potential future leaders of an international team as we wrap up our time together today? To be open to going anywhere. In our case, it was uh, what would fit into our our time frame best. And so it just happened to be Czech Republic. And but I was willing to go anywhere in the world, basically, to lead a team. And so it was it was great having all of the options just presented on the on the website there and uh, to go through each one of them and consider what might fit in. And, and so be open uh, to going anywhere and, and trust that uh, it's going to be an eye opening experience that will, I think, deepen participants desire to to share the gospel with those people around them. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, start early. <laughs> and, we are already talking about spring break 2025 potential dates and locations. So, yeah. Great. Our guest today, the Reverend Richard Wilmer, pastor of University Lutheran Church at Indiana University in Bloomington, Indiana. Pastor Wilmer, thank you so much for being our guest. Thank you. You're welcome. 
and Louis Ostermeyer, member of University Lutheran Church IU and short-term mission participant. Thank you so much for being our guest today. Thanks. It was great talking with you. And Gonzalez, a manager of short-term mission training and engagement with the LCMS Office of International Mission. Thanks so much, Anne. Always a pleasure. Learn more at servenow.lcms.org. You've been listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. The Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support The Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you. Anytime. Anywhere. Anywhere.